Um, well, I got shot in the back. Um, so me and my husband were, were there and um, we had heard um, the first like eight to 10 shots and he grabbed me and um, kind of said, get down. And so we kind of hunkered down a little bit and um, nobody else really was doing that. And so we kind of looked around and um, we, we stood up and um, we could, he could read people's mouths just saying, it's just fireworks, it's just fireworks. So, and the music was still playing and everybody was still having a great time. We all were. So we all went back to having a great time. And within a couple minutes after that, it, the fire just, firework, I mean, not the fireworks, but the, it just like came out of nowhere and it just never stopped, it felt like. Um, and so um, we had heard it, um, the second burst of gunfire and um, we turned this way and a woman next to us, because um, our friends were with us too, and um, a woman next to us um, got shot in the head and she f fell on the ground. And um, we knew then that we were, we were being shot at. So um, my husband um, kind of grabbed me to go this way and we ran back towards the stage because we were like right in the very front, you know, on the right hand side, like where all the shooting and stuff. And Mandolin Bay was up there, like we were all right there. And so um, we started running towards, more towards the center of the stage. And um, we could see people kind of falling down a little bit or or maybe getting shot or whatever. So my husband said, get down on the ground. So we got down on the ground and we laid there because we thought the gun, the shooter was, you know, on the ground with us. And um, it was really frightening. Um, I remember them having um, Jason Aldean being rushed off the stage, music stopped, lights went out, and that's when you could hear all the screams and the shooting and the gun and, and um, just, the fearfulness in you. So we laid down and um, it stopped for a little bit. And so um, he said, um, get up. And we started to kind of mose, trying to run, but not really running. So we um, ran, tried to run a little bit again, and then it started again, the gunfire. And so we got down on the ground again, and um, this was the third burst, and this is when I got shot. So we um, were like laying there, and um, all of a sudden, I felt um, this, this, I felt the bullet. Um, it was like electricity, kind of like um, a zapping, like zzz kind of thing that went through my body. And I got shot, um, since we were laying on our, on our stomachs, I got shot in the back. So it, when the bullet went in, it broke three to four ribs. And then it kind of traveled upwards and it fractured my scapula and it, it went up and over my vertebrae and it fractured um, three vertebrae and it came out like right here. And so um, I could hear my husband because um, he felt my body go up, jump up and then go back down. And that was when I was going, when I felt the, the zapping sound in me or the zapping in me. And so he said, um, Sue, are you okay? And I could hear him say that, but I couldn't answer him. And then he said, asked me again. And um, I said, I think I got shot. And um, he said, okay, you're, it's all right. Uh, let me look. And so he um, looked at my back and he could see um, where the bullet went in and blood was coming from that. And um, he, he said, you're going to be okay. And he kind of was, you know, holding my head right here. And then that's when he could feel the warm blood on here, he said. And so he... So at that point, we didn't know what was going on, um, just that I had got shot. And um, then I started telling him that I couldn't feel my hands at all, like everything was, was numb. And he said, it's going to be okay. And um, we laid there. And um, he just, he said, he just, I remember him just starting to pray. And um, I could hear the people, I could hear all the chaos and the gunfire and all that going on and you just wanted to be still. That's it. You just wanted to lay still because you didn't want the gunman to come over to you. And so we were laying there and um, all of a sudden um, a guy comes up to Mitch. Now I pretty much was kind of out of it, you know, at that point because um, when the bullet went came in, it cracked my ribs, so it breaks the membrane that's in the chest cavity, so then it starts filling up 
with blood and all kinds of stuff to for your um, lungs to collapse. And so my lungs were collapsing at that point, but we didn't know at that point. So this man comes up and my husband's laying there and meanwhile bullets are going past his head. Like he can hear the bullets literally go past his head and he's thinking we're both gonna die because he can't move me and and I, I can't do anything. So he thinks that he's just, we're just both gonna die there. And um, this, this guy comes up and says, um, has she been shot? And um, my husband said, yes, she has. And he said, well, can she move? And he said, no, she's already numb. So the guy says, well, you guys can't stay here. You're gonna get, you're in the line of fire. You're gonna get shot again. So he said, let's move her. We're gonna move her over to the fence over there. So I'll grab under one arm, you grab under the other, and we're gonna take her over. So they did that, and um, it was up against this fence where there was a whole bunch of bodies, people, um, and and so I was laying there, and um, this guy, this guy, and this woman, this guy comes over and says, um, "Has she been shot?" And my husband said, "Yes." And so he said, "Hey, Lori, which happened to be his wife, you need to come over here and and see this woman." And so. Um, she did, and she comes over and she said, where has she been shot? And um, my husband showed her, he, you know, in the back and then here. And um, she said, well, I'm an ER nurse and we have to get her to the hospital right now. So um, she called um, some people over and they got one of those fences, you know, those barricade fences and they turned it sideways and they put me on it. And just as they were carrying it, um, somebody comes by with a trash can, like a big trash can that has wheels on it. And so they put that on top of that and they wheeled me across the field. Um, I, I was kind of in and out. I do remember like going over like w trash or whatever, whatever it was. And I remember saying, ow, because I'm laying on that um, um, fencing thing and I would go up and down we would go over like you know all kinds of trash and stuff and I just remember coming down and I it hurt and so when we got out to the side um, there was a cop car and um, they were pointing to to go down there well my husband looked down there and it's like way down there like you could hardly see any lights like for help and so they're kind of like, okay, well, that's so far away, you know, to wheel me all the way down there. And just as that was happening, there comes a car with a man and a woman in it and a little SUV. They roll down the window and they say, do you guys need help? And um, the nurse is like, yes, we need help. We need to get her to the hospital. So the man parks his car, lifts up his, the hatch. He puts, they put me in there and um, my husband jumps in. So he's on the side in the back passenger and then they laid the one side down for me. And then um, the nurse went with us. And so she basically was straddling me and she was telling my husband, we need to keep her awake. We can't let her go. So um, so meanwhile, there's, it's traffic, you know, Vegas is packed, it's more, even more chaotic now. Um, the lights are super long, at, you know. And so the, the driver, and um, he had a passenger that was kind of telling him where to go. Um, I think he just kind of like lost it and kind of got like frantic. So he pulls over on the side to like this little mini market gas station thing and he gets out of his car and he starts looking at his phone. And he's like, um, you know, looking at it. And um, Mitch is like, what is he doing to the nurse? And the nurse is like, we gotta go. She's like, get back in the car and drive. So it kind of was like a slap in the face. Like he was just like, so like, didn't know what to do or where to go. And so he um, gets back in the car and so he's kind of pulls out and as he's pulling out um, and the, it's all traffic and everything, there's, um, they hear the siren of an ambulance coming. So they're all saying, get behind the ambulance. So the ambulance comes right up. He gets right behind the ambulance and they go straight to the hospital from there. So um, I, at that point, um, don't remember a lot. Uh, I do remember. I do remember saying I can't keep my eyes open anymore. And um, I remember my husband saying, "It's okay. We're almost here." Um, and then from there, we were at the hospital, and um, he. They basically had the gurney out there. They got me on the gurney. Um, my husband's saying her name is Susie Lapore, you know, because like there's you don't you know you don't know who's who, right? And um, 
So they took me in and um, my husband and my family had to wait seven hours before they even knew if I was dead or alive or what was going on with me. Um, I um, had my cowboy boots on and so I had my phone inside my cowboy boots. So um, at the hospital, they don't know who you are basically. So um, they call, They found my, my uh, phone and they called the last two people that had called me, which was my sister-in-law and my friend Robin. And um, they ended up calling them at 5.30 in the morning and like asking like, you know, we need to get a hold of the next of kin, like, you know, where this is Sunrise Hospital, you know, so it was very frantic for them to get that phone call. And um, so they ended up being able to get in contact with my husband and um, he was able to go up and I was in ICU. I had um, two drains um, here that were draining my lungs and I had to be on a ventilator. Um, I was in ICU for 10 days, and um, I was on all kinds of <laughs> heavy drugs, and um, it was scary when I woke up, because at that point for 10 days, like they had me so under so much drugs, and there's so much broken inside of me that um, they were keeping me kind of under a little bit. and. Um, I remember waking up and I remember um, them asking me, do you know where you are? And um, do you know what year it is? And, and all that, and I, I knew that I was in the hospital. Um, they asked me which hospital, I said, I said Henry Mayo, but I, I, you know, I didn't know.